disappeared on his way home. What happened to Brandon Swanson? Welcome back to Unsolved Mysteries, an exploration into strange occurrences, phenomena, and disappearances in the historical record. 9, 2013, 0, 50, and 38 seconds. 911 emergency. Yeah, I'm in the middle of the field. It's safe. We're just pushing some guys over. Right here going towards gas. We're on both sides. My truck ran out of gas. There's one car here. Got to take to the woods. Please hurry. Okay, now run that by me. Yeah, we're not talking to him. I show you ran into him. Ah, uh, you ran into him. Okay. That's the first guy. Do you need an ambulance? No, I need the cops. Okay. Is anybody hurt? Hello? 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 Ah, you ran into him. Okay. That's the first guy. Do you need an ambulance? Brandon Swanson was born to Brian and Annette Swanson on January 30, 1989. He was born and raised in Marshall, Michigan. Brandon had recently graduated from Marshall Senior High School in 2007. He was enrolled in a one-year program in wind turbines at Minnesota West Community and Technical College located in Canby, Minnesota. The day Brandon went missing. Leading up to Brandon's disappearance, he was celebrating the end of his program at Minnesota West Community and Technical College. His friends threw him two parties on May 13, 2008. The first party Brandon went to was located in Lind, Minnesota which is seven miles away from his home. Around midnight, Brandon left the first party and drove approximately 40 minutes to Canby, Minnesota to attend the second party. Friends who went to both parties, recall that Brandon had consumed alcohol but he was not intoxicated. By 1.45 a.m. Brandon crashed his Chevy Lumina in a small ditch. Thankfully, Brandon is not injured, but he does call his parents to help get out of the ditch. He, he said he was fine, but he was not injured. And, you know, in fact, when we did find his vehicle, there was no damage to it. It was simply muddy from being on a gravel road, um, but no damage to the vehicle. You know, as Brandon tried to explain to us where his location was, and he was extremely sure of himself. He, he felt confident in, in where he was at. Um, and that we were the ones that were confused about, you know, how to get to him. And as the conversation went on, as the minutes ticked by, you know, it, it, be, it came to a point where as, as long as Brandon was on the phone, as long as he was talking, as long as we had contact, it was okay. We would be okay. But the minute that he, that that call dropped, I just, became sick. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was very, very bad and just could hardly fathom, you know, what was happening at that point. We didn't immediately hang up the phone. We, you know, we called his name. We tried to, you know, thinking that he still had the phone, that it was very near him, that he could pick it up. We'd he'd hear our voice and we, we called out to him several times and we realized, you know, he's, he's not there. Um, so we did. We called him back several times thinking, you know, he'll, he'll see the phone light up. Even if he didn't have it on ring, he would see his phone light up when the call came in and he'd find it. Um, it, it you know. He At this point, he was in between Lynn and Marshall. His parents set out to find Brandon. They recalled that they thought they knew exactly where Brandon was. However, when they arrived there was no car or sign of Brandon. Brain called his son again to see if he could see headlights or hear the car horn, but Brandon could not see or hear anything. His parents were aware that Brandon had the wrong directions. Brandon was confident that he was giving his parents the correct directions, which led to frustration but he stayed on the phone with his mother. Brandon told his mother he would stay on the phone but would leave his car and attempt to walk toward the lights he could see in the distance. Brandon had assumed that it was towards the town of Lind, he did this all while on the phone with his parents. He remained on the phone with his parents for 47 minutes. 
Around 2.30 a.m. on May 14, 2008, Brandon screamed oh shit before the call ended. His father tried to call him back several times but Brandon never picked up. His parents reached out to Brandon's friends for help and they searched all night, driving through farmland and dirt roads, but unfortunately, there was no sign of Brandon. By 6.30 a.m. Annette reported her son missing to Lind Police Department, and it wasn't long before officers joined the search for Brandon. There was still no sign of Brandon. According to a CNN article, the search response was delayed because it was not unusual for a 19-year-old to stay out all night after finishing school. One officer also told Annette Swanson that her son had the right to go missing. Police were able to locate Brandon's car roughly 25 miles from Lind and were unclear as to which direction he was headed while on foot. Brandon Victor Swanson stands at 5 apostrophe 6 and weighs 125 pounds. He has brown hair and blue eyes and was last seen wearing blue jeans, a white or black hat twisted to the side, and a white short sleeve shirt. Brandon's case remains unsolved. On July 1, 2009, Brandon's law went into effect in Minnesota. The law requires that authorities conduct a preliminary investigation once a missing person report is received. If anyone has information about Brandon Swanson please call the Lincoln County Sheriff at 507-694-1664.